Okay, let's talk about how to find email addresses. But you might be asking, why email first? Well, I always try to calibrate with my prospects' ideal communication medium. If they're on email all day and that's how they talk to their business contacts, I hit them up on email. If they prefer the phone or aren't very computer savvy, maybe I'll give them a call. But the bottom line is, is you want to calibrate and interact with these people in the way that they're used to interacting in this context. And for the most part, I find that business executives, whether it's in the technology sphere or with traditional companies, typically interact via email. Another reason why I really like email is because it's just less obtrusive. It's asynchronous, which means they can get back to me on their own time. And again, it matches their preferred method. If I'm going in cold with somebody, the last thing I want to do is, during the first interaction, interrupt their day while they're doing something important. That's not to say that this can't be effective and that there's times that call for this, but if I can get them via email in a less obtrusive way, that is how I want to originally approach them to get a meeting. The first tool that I use to guess email addresses is a Gmail plugin that can be found at Reportive.com. It's, it's called Reportive. And basically what it does is it populates social profiles on the right-hand side of Gmail when you have the correct email address. And essentially how you can leverage this in order to figure out people's email address is just guess popular common email syntaxes. So that could be their first initial last name, just their last name, just their first name at the company domain. You get the picture. But basically what you can do is plug in all of these different popular syntaxes and when you actually get a correct guess, more often than not, on the right-hand side of your Gmail inbox, you will start to see social profiles when you have the correct address. Let's go ahead and do a live demo, demo so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So here is a live view of Report of an Action. Again, how you use this tool is, is basically guessing popular email syntaxes <laughs> within Gmail. And if you have the correct one, often a social profile will come up. So let's just go ahead and try the my own email address at my company website, which is lifelonglearner.com. So if I was to guess, let's just say Scott at lifelonglearner.com. See this box up here on the right-hand side? Now it has my Twitter, LinkedIn, all this information. This is an indication that this is the correct email address because Basically, what this does is it pulls from a third-party service called Rapleaf that identifies what email addresses are associated with what social profiles online. Now, if I tried something like sbritton at lifelonglearner.com, see what would happen. Nothing here, which is an indication that although that doesn't mean that this email address doesn't exist, it's, we certainly can't feel very confident that it is the right one at this point. So this is reportive. It's entirely free. They are actually bought by LinkedIn, and right now it is only available for Gmail users. Now, it's important to know that sometimes reportive doesn't work. Even when you have the correct email address, often there isn't publicly available data on the social profiles that are linked to that email address. So you, you need to sometimes rely on some other tools. And the next stop that I usually go is MailTester.com. MailTester is just a free service that checks whether a server has a particular email address on it. And again, you can do the same thing where you guess popular syntaxes and see if they work. Just to kind of show you what this looks like is, basically you type into a popular syntax, you check the address, and if it is the if that email address does exist on a server, you'll get basically an all green box here that says email address is valid. If you have an incorrect guest and if there's no address on that server, you're going to get this this red box at the bottom here that flat out says there's no email address that exists on the server. Sometimes you're you're going to get a, a yellow box that basically says that there's something on the server which blocks you from determining whether that email actually exists. Another place you can go is jigsaw.com or data.com. They're both the same thing and are, were purchased actually by Salesforce not too long ago. Essentially what jigsaw.com is, is just an open source contact database where anybody can contribute 
the name and contact information of particular people at companies. And in exchange for contributing to the database, they can get contact information for people that they're looking for. You do get a few free credits for signing up. And I will say that when you do get email addresses from this service, I always like to try to double check them with mail tester or reporter just to be sure because people, because the data is self-reported, it can be inaccurate at times. Just to show you what this looks like, so you enter in the company you're looking for, then you can search by position, department, level, and when you click on one of these contacts uh, that you can purchase for points, which you get by either literally paying money or adding new contacts to the database, you can get the phone number and email address for this person. Pretty neat little service that's definitely helped me in the past. Another great free tool is Emails for Corporations. Essentially, it's a Google site with some of the top, I'd say top 500 corporations out there that just provides the email convention they use for their mailing address. So you'll see right in the middle here that they have company name, the email convention, email domain, and just a main phone number. So if you know you're going after like Fortune 100, Fortune 1000 companies, these are 100% accurate and you can just go to this URL right here that you have on the screen, which is also available in the resources link section. Now, sometimes you have to go and get somebody's personal email address or sometimes even it's impossible for you to get the corporate email address using all the tools mentioned above. One creative way which I've used to find email addresses, especially when I'm trying to find somebody's personal email, is snapbird.org. And essentially what you can do is this tool searches somebody's Twitter history and very often people communicate on Twitter what their email address is in kind of a subtle way. They don't outright state their email address, but they'll state the maybe the naming convention and then the word at whatever company name.com. So just to kind of show you an example, my old handle, Scott Britt, we searched my timeline and the word that I searched for was Gmail. You can imagine you can put the company name in there. And basically uh, what this does is it surfaces an instance in my Twitter history where I gave out my personal email. So there's probably instances where your prospects either giving out their corporate email, personal email, if they're, if they're social, socially savvy, uh, that you can use to contact them. Now, I definitely don't recommend, in the biz dev context at least, hitting somebody on their personal email unless you absolutely have to. Always, always, always go corporate email, which again, you can find on somebody's Twitter stream, but there is instances just for personal networking or wherever where you might want somebody's uh, personal email. And this is an excellent way to identify those. That's often much harder to do than finding the corporate email address. Another great tool, uh, again, free database is twofer.com. Twofer is actually a service started by one of my buddies, uh, Max, who used to run BD at Attorney Fee and now has an awesome conference called the Sales Hacker Conference. And it's pretty much the same thing. You, you search for a particular company or a person and it surfaces the correct email address uh, that they're pulling from a variety of data sources. It's pretty cool. A few other tactics, if none of these work, you can call and ask. Um, again, I've had a ton of success just doing an informational cold call and asking for somebody what their email address is because I have to send them some important information. For really small sites where maybe it's a one to three man operation and all you get on the site is just a contact form, which you generally want to avoid by the way, you can go to register.com and actually do a reverse who is lookup to see who purchased the domain. So what you do is go to register.com, then you want to click reverse who is lookup, type in the actual domain, and you can see if the domain is not protected, the administrator's email address who purchased that site. So for example, bdplaybook.com, the site which this course is hosted on, or one of the places it's hosted on, you can see the administrative email is my personal email right there. Pretty cool. And, uh, you know, interestingly enough, I've gotten deals with very small operations who actually run powerful businesses uh, by using the reverse site who is lookup to find out, you know, how to get in contact directly with the person's email address they check 
not the contact form that they have a secretary or assistant check. Other tactics, uh, you can search SlideShare actually. All of the text available on SlideShare is searchable and at the end of a slideshow, people often put their contact information. So for example, I just searched at lifelonglearner.com, my, my personal website. And again, you, the reason you, sh you search at lifelearner.com is because typically the, the at sign, the only time that you're gonna see the at sign with the domain is in an email address syntax. When I search that, one of my presentations that I gave on networking to the CTO school showed up. And what do you know, at the very end there is an email address to contact me. Pretty neat. And you can get some really, really high-end contacts, email addresses, by leveraging this SlideShare trick. And, and not a lot of people do it. So definitely, definitely give it a try. Lastly, the final tactic is just Googling your best guess and hoping that there's a press release or even just some generic document out there that has somebody's email address on it. And you can, you can use search modifiers in addition to the generic email conventions we, we talked about earlier to try to accomplish this. So if I wanted to go try to find a PDF or a press release with somebody's email address, I could just search a popular email convention at thecompanyname.com with the uh, search modifier on there, file type PDF. So it only searches for PDFs documents that are hosted on websites uh, which contain email addresses often. Some people say, well, boy, this seems like a pain to do all this find an email address. I mean, I, f I found them on LinkedIn. Can't I just LinkedIn message them? Well, I actually very much try to avoid LinkedIn messages at all costs. And I have actually produced a video on why I do this. Check it out. Hey peeps, Scott here coming to you from the Kitchen de Breton. So a lot of people when I teach Skillshare class and stuff ask, Scott, how do you feel about LinkedIn messages? Here's how I feel. 95% of the people who reach out to me on LinkedIn are irrelevant. They're recruiters, random people from the Philippines, or people trying to sell me stuff. So when you reach out to somebody on link through a LinkedIn message versus an email, you essentially put yourself into those buckets of people, right? And that's literally the last place that I want to be. Um, so I personally never, ever, ever reach out to somebody on LinkedIn through LinkedIn instead of email unless I absolutely have to. I mean, I'll seriously hit somebody up on their pager before I go to LinkedIn. Um, and there's a million ways to find people's email addresses. I know somebody who wrote a post about it, wink, wink. So uh, personally, I don't think you should ever reach out to somebody through a LinkedIn message unless you absolutely have to. And also like the communication mechanism, like just is also a pain as well. Like I have to log back into LinkedIn, communicate through there, and then it goes through my email. It's just confusing. You wanna message people through the medium that they're most comfortable with and that where their valuable connections are already messaging them instead of putting yourself in a bucket of people that ultimately is irrelevant. So it's not to say that LinkedIn messages don't work. Um, I've certainly gotten partnerships through LinkedIn message as well as uh, people reach out to me that I responded to a LinkedIn message. But the bottom line is, is it is not the optimal communication channel. Uh, it's much better to try to go through email or even phone um, over LinkedIn.